Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. And this is episode 72. It is Thursday night. Um, It's actually a beautiful night. I came back outside. Um, I'm kind of digging this. Uh, Just just perfect weather. No wind. Nice and cool. Not too hot. Actually, it's not hot at all. It's comfortable. Uh, Pretty quiet. My neighborhood, I, I... I'm right on a cul-de-sac, so we get very little traffic. All the traffic you hear where I'm at is from the the highway, which is uh, right outside my uh, my neighborhood. But um, ain't anyway. Um, yeah, tonight just uh, kind of getting ready to experience this crazy weekend because my wife isn't gonna be here, <laughs> so. <laughs> But uh, yeah, she's leaving tomorrow. We were kind of up in the air. We didn't know what to ha- what what to do. You know, she could postpone the flight, but it's, you know, it's her nephew's wedding, and I understand. And she's always supported me. You know, I, I, I wish I could have gone, but I just think it was better. Is that way she can have a little time? Because when I'm there, she tends to you know want to entertain me I kind of let her go and hang out with her family and besides Santana's here and I got to stay with her and um I just think it's better it's just Florida so she'll be in and out so she leaves tomorrow she has like a 11 a.m flight and then uh they have um tomorrow they have um like a rehearsal dinner and then Saturday's the wedding and then Sunday morning she's back on a plane so I'm picking her up maybe around I don't know, 10, 11 a.m. on Sunday, so. And, um, yeah, so, but uh, she just went and made, like, 20 different meals. <laughs> and she put them in Tupperware um, so that way we can eat. <laughs> so she's like, what do you want? So she's like, made rice and beans and steak in one. She made, uh, no, she put steak in one Tupperware, Chuck steak the way I like it. She got rice and beans in another one. She has... Um, hamburgers and another one. Uh, Santana likes tacos, so she's got some chopped meat for her and another one. The tortillas, and you know, on the table, and then she's got some pasta with meat sauce, and <laughs> and, and then she baked it, <laughs> and then she baked the cake. <laughs> so, <laughs> meanwhile, we probably won't eat anything. We'll probably just go out. <laughs> I was thinking of taking uh, Santana to uh, maybe to IHOP on the way back. Oh, maybe just come home and take her to IHOP Saturday morning. Matter of fact, I think that might be a better idea. Then maybe we'll go to like, um, maybe we'll go to movies or something. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how, I, you know, I hate to make plans like that because I'm one of those, those dudes. I'll make plans and then change my mind at the last minute. I also do it opposite too. I say I'm not going somewhere and then change my mind. The next thing you know, I'm packing up to go somewhere the next day. I don't know why I'm like that. It's weird. It's weird. And, and what's so crazy is like, if I make a commitment to go somewhere, sometimes I complain. I, I, it kind of sucks. Yeah. She hates when I do that. You know, like um, if I have a get together, let's say I'm going to do a, we're going to do a cookout or we're going to have a party somewhere or, you know, I'm like excited, excited. I, I plan it like two months ahead, a month ahead, a couple weeks ahead. Meanwhile, the day before, that night before, I'm like, ah, oh, man. Ah, oh, man, I hope, I hope it storms, man. I really, you know. <laughs> but then um, I go through with it, and I end up having a good time. So um, we haven't had a cookout here for, for a minute. I, I want to, I wanna, maybe this summer. Uh, just... Um, We've just been busy and we've been doing other things. I just like, my head has been like, you know, constantly, constantly in work. You know, the whole shift with the genre, with even the whole freestyle market, you know, um, not that it's going anywhere, but it's shifting, 
you know, so if I want to, you know, maintain my quality of living, you know, I have to shift with it. I have to kind of move forward with it. And um, it takes a lot of research into what's going on, where you're headed with this. And and I do a ton of that stuff, you know, and then uh, I get involved with different companies that I try to branch branch over and you know into into freestyle and see if that works whether it's you know you know doing some merchandise when I'm doing some you know apparel I'm doing fragrances or I'm writing books and it's just constant constant trying to rewrite to uh, rewrite this shit you know what I mean um I see a lot of people especially artists I tell this to my wife all the time I'm like you know, there's a lot of artists out there that they, like, they live from show to show. That this is, their whole world is about the next show. And a lot of times they get quite a few shows. There's something that's not right with that now, right now, at our age. Um, during this time, I feel that. I feel that if I was, first of all, CoverGirl is a pretty pricey act. And then with the accommodations and the fact there's multiple people and they're women, we can't do every show that comes our way. So we have to space it. And that's very typical with women. Women have children or how they have grandchildren. They're usually um, the, the host of events. They're always being invited to you know, weddings or showers or whatever the case, you know, take the kids to a birthday party or whatever. Guys are a little bit more like, okay, you go do that. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do this show. You go, you go take the kids to this party. You go, you know, you go to the wedding and represent. I'm going to, I'm going to take the, I'm going to go do this show, you know, so guys do that. But with the women, um, it's a little harder, you know, proof is, you know, the situation with Lil Susie. Lil Susie is like high demand still. I get calls for her practically every day and practically every day I have to turn down shows. And when I'm talking about turning down shows, I'm talk talking about turning down a significant amount of money throughout the year. More than, you know, most people, well, at least... But most people I know that to work a typical nine to five making an entire year. I mean, she's she's giving that up on a monthly basis. It's crazy. It's crazy. But I don't blame her. You know, I make a, a significant amount from her. Manager, road manager, agent, or exclusive. But I don't I'm not upset about it. I'm not I, I, I understand and I actually believe that that move that she's making is a blessing in disguise for me because think about it. Susie could probably she remember you gotta keep in mind, even though she's pricey, she's solo by herself. So when we go on the road, it's just me and her. That's it. So it's pretty easy to accommodate her and she has a different market as far as you know, well she has the same freestyle market, but she has a lot of younger fans because of her age and when her records really popped. Even though she comes back from the 80s, I don't know you guys probably seen that that um that photo I have it on my page where it's Lil Susie with the cover girls and that was during a time that they were both on the same label and um I was incarcerated during that time because I was with Susie before she signed to that label so it's just crazy how everything just went full circle you know so she's there taking a picture with my wife who at that time had no idea who the hell I was and I was incarcerated during that time Susie knew who I was because I was on the road with her and now I wasn't on the road so it, it was very weird very weird uh, situation. Um, but, you know, I look at a lot of people who really strive. And, you know, I, I know there's a handful of artists who probably listen to this podcast. And, and it's not a diss to them. I mean, sometimes this is their life. I understand. I'm not an artist. But I understand. Like, my wife would do a show every freaking day if she could. And she'll do it for free. If her bills and her food could be covered, she'll do this every, every freaking day. You know? She enjoys it. This is what she does. She loves it. It's like, it's part of her. I love it too. I've tried to break away from the business several times and I've always come back, you know. Um, I just love the business. I just love it. It was always my thing. Um, but you look at some artists who 
really, really strive to get these shows. And what happens is, it seems like the entire existence there, everything that, everything that they're doing is towards the next show and to get in that money so they can pay the bills. And, and that's cool. They pay the bills. But at this age, it's a little tricky. Now, this was cool even probably up to 50. But now at this, this age, because we can all talk about how long, how fast the last 10 years flew by. 10 years? Oh, my God. Whew, flew by. Especially in this business. Because it's fun. You go on the road, and if you have eight shows, and then once a month, that's eight, eight, that's eight year, eight months that just went by. It's almost a year. A few more months, you got a year that went through, you know? So the time flies. But now you get to the point where your entire being is focused on your next show, paying the bills for the next show. And I'm fortunate and thankful that I set myself up in a way, I set us up in a way that, like during the time when the recession hit, that was what, I don't know, 2008, 2009, during the time of the recession, I held on to eight houses, all paid in full, cars that were paid for in full, um, my overhead, I had some rents coming in because I didn't rent them all out. But those rents were covering the basic bills. So I didn't feel not one pinch. When the recession, you know when I got to know about the recession? When it was over. Because then everybody started talking about the recession of 2008, 2009. And then I kept thinking about, well, what was happening? Well, 2008, I did the Freestyle Music Awards. 2008, I paid $23,000 for some colognes. 2008, I was doing all these t-shirts. 2008, I was booking like crazy, you know? There was a lot going on. 2007, I got married. 2006, I bought a house and moved to North Carolina. Like, you know, there was a lot going on for me during that time. So I didn't feel, it's like, because I don't watch the news. Now, if everybody wasn't in an uproar and it wasn't all over social media, I probably wouldn't even know about this coronavirus. I'll be real. I do not stay up on the news. Sorry, <laughs> you know? People say, well, you don't know what's going on in the world. Well, you know what? I gotta go with the world no matter which way it goes. So what I'm gonna do, instead of watching what the world is doing, I'm just gonna do my thing. I'm just gonna move forward and do my thing and focus on what I'm doing. Let the news, listen, I hate to hear tragedies. I hate to hear bad news. I hate to hear, you know, I hate to hear this stuff, man. I hate to hear that people are dying and people are getting sick and celebrities are getting sick and, you know, people we know and family and people on Facebook. I hate to hear this stuff. I don't think anybody likes to hear it. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not special. But it doesn't draw me to a television or draw me to wanting to read an article. It's like I don't want to read it. I don't want to read it. I, I might read certain things or watch something that was tragic because sometimes I feel like I owe it to the victim. For real. I know it sounds silly. I feel like I at least owe that to the victim. You know, if the victim went through a horrible, you know, you know, crime and the tragic, and they tragically were killed or whatever the case may be, I feel that at the very least, I owe it to them to at least know their story. But I can get to it. But currently, I can't do that. I can't always do it currently because it can get really depressing. It's less depressing when it's something that happened a while ago. But to read it when it just happened and then to see people post about it, like like the Kobe situation. I mean, his daughter and those, those people that passed away that died in that, that crash, you know. It was sickening, man. I travel. I fly a lot. I don't fly helicopters, but I fly, you know? And, you know, you think of someone like Kobe who retired and who's... Sometimes you look at athletes and actors as immortals. But then when they pass or when they're tragically killed and then something like their child is killed also, it's like you, you get to realize your own, what is it, immortality? 
you know? So, but I don't want to, and I tell my wife this, I don't want to spend our every waking moment hustling for the next show. Because right now at 50 years old, I'm actually 53, but uh, give or take. <laughs> so I say 50 for the next 50 years, so the next 10 years, so I'm 60. I have to change, I have to shift gears. I love what I do. I'm not leaving it. So everyone who competes with me don't think I'm leaving it. No, if anything, I'm shifting gears so I can rebuild it, make it bigger. I'm talking about my bookings and so on. Make it bigger, make it more beneficial for the artists. I know what I need to do. I, for the agency, I know exactly what I need to do. Um, but right now, I can't focus on that. I have to shift my gears and I have to get some other things going. So that way we can re-secure ourselves once again in life. Because if we're secure and I'm, I'm able to you know, cover my expenses and my bills and everybody's good, it gives me a peace of mind which allows me to go into my office and spend hours after hours building, developing something new. Because remember, while you're developing, you're not making any money. You're not making any money. And what's so funny is that I could be working on something that generates me currently no, not a penny. And then the phones ring and people want to book shows. And you know what? I'm not interested. How crazy is that? I mean, I'm turning away, you know, thousands of dollars. Only and It's not because I got it like that. I'm turning this money away because I'm so caught up and so interested in what I'm doing. It's like, they're disturbing me. <laughs> they're freaking disturbing me. But then I got to wake up and a lot of times it's my wife because she checks the call ID because we have a connection that goes into the house. And she's like, um, so-so call. The only time that person calls is when they want to book a show. And when they usually, when they want to book a show, it's usually several artists, which means several thousand dollars in the pocket. How come you didn't answer the phone? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to call back. And then once I say I'm going to call back, you know, every 15 minutes, hey, did, did you call him back? That was Bobby D. Did you call Bobby D? That was Alan. Did you call Alan? Did you call Jumbo? Did you call, you know, did you call Ruben? Did you call Andy? <laughs> did you call? And finally I get to a point where I have to call them back. I'm like, and she's right. She's right. You know, I'm not, I can't give up what I have. Competitors would love that, but I can't. Now, once I start the booking process, it's easy for me. I mean, I could knock out an entire deal, man, within an hour. Especially if you're booking any of my personal acts. That's like, what? Okay, cool. Send the money. Everybody's good. Let's go. I got contract B over you in 15 minutes. Sign off. Start your advertising. We're good to go. And we're locked. I could do that in an hour. And that generates several thousand dollars. Several, you know, depending on the deal. But I look at people who are doing so well in shows. Like, you look at them, they're on every freaking show. And it's beautiful. They're getting paid. Trust me, they get paid. I know what these acts get paid. Even the small ones, they get paid. If they're doing that, that, that volume, that kind of volume. But it's almost like a distraction. It's like, okay, you're busy, you're doing that. You're spending all your money on these outfits. You're, you know, you're, you're, uh, you know, I don't know what else you're doing, but next thing you know, a year is going to go by, two years, three years, five years, eight years, ten years, 60 years old now. Now what? What you going to do now? At, at some point, the shows are going to slow down, and I'll tell you why. One of the reasons why we maintain right now, why we, we all stay pretty busy, is because we still do nightclubs. We still do nightclubs. Okay, last weekend we did Houston. That was a, a venue uh, and, a, and a small arena. It was called the Arena Theater. And then the next day we did Cocktails, which is a nightclub. I just got called now to do another Austin show, just Angel uh, in, uh, Solo. It's a nightclub. You know, we have Gay Pride coming. That's a festival, but there's also a nightclub involved. Like an after party, I think it's a no, it's a kickoff party. So it's before the show, before the um, the concert. So we still do clubs. But think about it like this, okay? Think about it like this. Let's talk about disco, 
okay? Now, you can still find disco concerts, 70s concerts. You can go to a concert and see, well, whoever's left, whoever's alive. The ones who are not alive, you might see, I don't call those phonies. You'll see the tribute acts. You'll see the, the Donna Summers tribute. You'll see the village people who have changed their members a billion times for whatever reason. Um, you'll see Tavares. You'll see how old they got. You'll see, you know, uh, Gloria Gaynor still out there. Um, the Bee Gees, whoever's left. <laughs> you know, it's, it, um, how often are they working? They're not making a living doing this. A lot of them got regular jobs or they're retired. They're on disability. They are on social security. Or they're living pretty modest. I mean, that's the polite way. That's the polite way of, of saying it. But you go to their apartment in New York City and it's like, oh my God, this is, this is where it ends. This is where it ends for you. So now, right now, freestyle still has the nightclubs. We still have the ability to make enough money and go out there and rebuild. And that's what we need to do. That's what everybody needs to do. Everybody needs to rebuild. Now, I see some signs. I see to George Lamont, he's got a podcast. I see Judy Torres. She's always doing something new. She's got her Beautiful Life podcast, which is great. She does her one-woman show, which I think is great. She's a life coach, which is great. Um, I know Karina was doing a one-woman show. Um, God, so a few acts are still recording. That's tricky. That's tricky. I'm not one to bust a bubble, but sometimes... Now, I'm, I'm never going to tell people never to record, not to record. But you have to be realistic when you're recording nowadays. You got to understand who our market is, who our fans are, and if they buy shit. Our fans right now don't buy shit. And one of the reasons is they can get shit for free. Listen, I don't care how big or how loyal you are as a fan. If you can get the shit for free, you're probably going to do it. And even... An artist who has loyal fans that will purchase items that are available for free to show their support, it's never going to be enough to sustain them. It might be five people. I have a thousand people, it might, might be five people. I, mean, I'm, I can't even say ten. I, I don't think there's ten. So you got ten people, five people that bought your new CD, your new single for 99 cents, or your new album for ten dollars. Okay, so you made 100 bucks. If they bought 10, if 10 people bought, I'm talking about five, so you made 50 bucks. Now what? This is the reality, man. This is the reality, and this is the stuff I'm trying to get through to people, and, but they don't get it, man. And they look at me like I'm hating. I'm not hating. I love my genre. I love my artists, even the ones that can't stand me. There's a lot of them that can't stand me because I don't shut up. Because I don't shut up. Because I look at things differently than they are, than they do. And they look at it as negative. They'll never claim they hate me. There might be one or two, but they, they, ain't, they ain't doing shit anyway. Um, but um, I, I just won't really want to try to encourage other artists to keep doing what they're doing. But see what they can build. And, and tie it into the genre. Like, I'm not saying go, you know, and... Now go play baseball. Go open up. Don't go open up a, a baseball store. If, I mean, if that's what you want to do, that's your prerogative. But what I'm trying to do is trying to encourage people to take whatever passions they have or whatever skills or talents they have and see if you could cross it with freestyle. I love to write. I love to write. Doesn't mean I'm a great writer. I just love to write books and blogs and whatever the case may be. Posts, certain posts. And so what I did is I crossed it with freestyle. Why not? All my books have Latino um, 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 characters. Why not? Urban books have black characters. I could do those too. That's fine. But I chose not to. Why not? I know my Latin people. <laughs> I'm one of them. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, that's it for tonight, guys. I appreciate you. It's so nice out here, man. Uh, 
I gotta listen back to these. I don't know if uh, if we're getting a lot of noise or not. But uh, but anyway, listen. Thanks a lot, all of you guys who are listening. Um, don't forget to share. Um, I would love for you to share this uh, podcast or any any of the podcasts I have right now. This is the seventy second episode. If there's a, an episode that really moves you, man, there's a share button. If you go onto Anchor.fm. I think in Spotify too and the other uh, platforms, there's share buttons and there's social media share buttons. Sometimes if you just share it and tag me in it, it lets me know what, if you're feeling that episode. I might even listen to it again because I probably won't remember it, you know. So if you can do that, that's great. You know, it gives me an idea. Some of you guys like to keep quiet, keep silent, you know, keep it private that you're, you're a private listener. That's fine. I'm cool. Just between us, me and you. That's it. Nobody needs to know nothing. But those who, if there's an episode that moves you and you share it, it tells me stuff, something, you know, and I appreciate it. So, but listen, let me go, guys. I appreciate you. Until tomorrow, good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.